Hello everyone, welcome to the video on anti-Parkinson drugs. Now let us understand what you mean by Parkinson diseases. Parkinson disease is a progressive neurodegenerative disease. It is also known as old age disease. When people age, neurodegeneration occurs. And it is progressive, that means with aging, the neurodegeneration increases. Especially it occurs in nigrostriatal pathway. Nigrostriatal pathway. So, there are neurons which are connecting substantia nigra and corpora striatum. Now, these neurons will get degenerated in Parkinson's disease and the neurotransmitter in these neurons is dopamine. So, there is a decreased levels of dopamine because of this neurodegeneration. Now, this pathway, nigrostriatal pathway is responsible for movements of the body. So what happens is when these neurons are getting degenerated and the neurotransmitter is reducing, it affects movements of human body. So this is also known as a kind of movement disorder. Let's see the more details of this disease. Now the signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease, they are known as, these three are known as triad of Parkinson's symptoms. Bradykinesia, kinesia means movement. Brady means reduced, that literally means reduced movements. Now muscle rigidity, muscles will get rigid and resting tremors. When people are in rest, tremor means shaking. The hands and limbs will shiver or shake. That is known as resting tremor. All these are because of nigrostriatal pathway degeneration. And that is what causes Parkinson's disease. So what happens in this pathology? This degeneration of nigrostriatal dopamine tracts with imbalance between dopamine and acetylcholine. See, dopamine is there in nigrostriatal pathway. There is a smooth balance between dopamine and acetylcholine. When dopamine levels are going down, the effects of acetylcholine will be increased. So this is what happens in Parkinson's disease. So how do we treat it either by enhancing dopamine or by reducing acetylcholine effects? These are the two treatment strategies for Parkinson's disease. Now see the classification. See, either enhancing dopamine effects or by reducing acetylcholine. How do we enhance dopamine effects? By using drugs like dopamine precursor dopamine agonist. Now dopamine metabolizing enzymes are there, catecholomethyltransferase and monoamine oxidase. When you inhibit these metabolizing enzymes, dopamine levels are increased. And dopamine facilitator which will enhance the release of dopamine. And one more enzyme inhibitor is there, peripheral decarboxylase inhibitor. We will see one by one. <coughs> see dopamine precursor is levodopa, dopamine agonist, bromocryptin, ropinrol, pramipexole, catecholomethyltransferase inhibitors, entecopone and tolcopone. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors, salicylate rasazine, carbidopa benzoazide are decarboxylase inhibitors. Amantidine is dopamine facilitator. Let us see about these drugs. But before getting into that, understand this one. See, blood brain barrier <coughs> is made up of tough blood vessel network which will not allow all the molecules into the brain. Only certain molecules are allowed. So, dopamine cannot cross the blood brain barrier, so you cannot directly use dopamine to treat Parkinson's disease. In the brain, you cannot enhance the levels of dopamine by directly administering dopamine. The reason is, see, <coughs> dopamine is this. It is an amine molecule. So the amine one can acquire charge and the charged molecule cannot cross blood brain barrier. But levodopa can be used which can cross this blood brain barrier. Now the reason is when you see the structure of levodopa, levodopa is this, is an amino acid, it has got an amine group, amine group and acid group is there. Now there are certain amino acid transporting proton, proteins are there in the blood brain barrier. So they will take these amino acids into the brain. But dopamine is just amine, it cannot cross blood brain barrier. So levodopa can be used to transport into the brain. Now once it gets into the brain. In the brain, there is an enzyme called aromatic amino acid decarboxylase. What do you mean by decarboxylase? Removal of this carboxylic acid group. Once you remove this carboxylic acid group, what happens? You will get dopamine. So dopamine is released, get into the brain. So levodopa is a kind of prodrug which is widely used to treat Parkinson's disease. This is how it acts. It is carried into the brain by amino acid transporters, is converted to dopamine and shows its effects. Now, let us see the uh, other things. So, see, levodopa <coughs> can also be converted to dopamine in peripheral tissue by amino acid decarboxylase. If this happens, again, dopamine cannot cross and the drug will be useless. That is the reason why carbidopa is used. Carbidopa, the job is it will inhibit this peripheral decarboxylase enzyme. In fact, levodopa is used in combination with carbidopa. 
So this is the use of carbidopa. Now these levodopa, dopamine and all of them can be metabolized by catechol O methyl transferase. So this catechol O methyl transferase is inhibited by tolcapone and anticapone drugs. See COMT is present in periphery as well as in CNS. So when you reduce the metabolism, the levels of levodopa will be increased, dopamine levels will be increased. Again, monoamine oxidase also metabolizes dopamine. So that is inhibited by salicylian desalicylic. So in this video, you see all the enzyme inhibitors like aromatic amino acid, <coughs> decarboxylase inhibitors like carbidopa, COMT inhibitors like tolcopone, anticopone, MEO inhibitors like salicylian desalicylic. Let us see little bit more details. Now understand this slide. Follow this one. See, levodopa. This is what is the drug uh, is used to treat Parkinson's disease. It can cross this blood brain barrier and it is converted into dopamine and it shows its effects on receptors. Now, <coughs> see, levodopa peripherally, be, before the brain, if it is decarboxylated, you get dopamine. To inhibit that, carbidopa is used. Now, but if peripherally dopamine is released, you have these kind of adverse effects are there. Now you know dopamine will be acting on beta receptors and causes hypotension, arrhythmia and vomiting. Now peripherally it can also, dopamine can, dopa can also be convert, metabolized by COMT which is inhibited by entacopone, tolcopone. So this happens in peripheral tissues. Now once it gets into the brain it is converted into dopamine and dopamine will be acting on these receptors. Now directly the receptor agonist can also be used like primipexol, ropinrol, bromocryptin and pergolide. Or Enzymes are inhibited, right? Tolcopone, anticopone inhibit COMT, MAO B is inhibited by salicylin, rasacillin. One more thing. See, if too much activation of dopamine is there, that overactivity will cause dyskinesia and behavioral changes, especially kind of psychosis. So understand these things. Increased levels of dopamine in the brain causes psychosis. Reduced levels of dopamine causes Parkinson's disease. Let us see the individual drugs. Now, levodopa, as we have seen, it is a prodrug which is converted to dopamine by aromatic amino acid decarboxylase. It is given with carbidopa because in peripheral tissue, the decarboxylation has to be inhibited. Now, major adverse effects, dyskinesia, uncontrolled or, or unregulated uh, motor movements because of excess levels of dopamine, on and off effects like contraction, relaxation kind of thing, psychosis, hypotension, vomiting. These two, when dopamine is peripherally converted to, I'm sorry, levodopa, when it is peripherally converted to dopamine, it causes these things. In the brain, excess levels of dopamine will cause these effects. <coughs> Tolcopone and tocopone, both of them are catechol-O-methyl transferase inhibitors. See, levodopa can be converted to 3O methyl dopa which is partial agonist which has got low efficacy. So these enzymes has to be inhibited. So they reduce efficacy of the levodopa. But tolcopone is a kind of hepatotoxic drug. Now salicylin, rasazilin, monoamine oxidase B inhibitors. They, they are used as an initial treatment and adjunct along with levodopa. Now side effects, dyskinesia, psychosis, insomnia, lack of sleep. Now, the other drugs, dopamine receptor agonist like bromocryptin, see, Bro Bro bromocryptin is a dopamine receptor agonist, but its major use is to treat hyperprolactinemia and acromegaly. See, prolactin hormone will be activated in nursing mothers which will enhance lactation. So, dopamine will inhibit the prolactin levels. That is the reason why bromocryptin is used to treat when someone has got excessive prolactin levels, hyperprolactinemia, and also acromegal is due to growth hormone, excess growth hormone stimulation. That is also inhibited by dopamine stimulation by bromocryptin. Side effect, dyskinesia and psychosis. Other drugs, primipexol and ropinrol. Now, drugs which are acting on acetylcholine function. As I told you, there is a smooth balance between dopamine and acetylcholine. In Parkinson's, dopamine levels are reduced, so acetylcholine levels are exaggerated. To treat that, anticholinergics like benzotropin, trihexyphenidyl are used. Now, they reduce tremor and rigidity, but they cannot treat bradykinesia. Side effects, anticholinergic like atropine like actions will be there. So, this is about anti Parkinson's drugs. If you like the video, do subscribe and share. Thank you for watching this video.